the field. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Eamon also. Uh, Dr. Mora, uh, Sarah, please come on. Dr. Eamon Ramani, please come on. And Okay, so now this is open discussion. We have all the speakers are here. Any questions about this session, about any session, any unanswered questions you want to ask our quality expert, uh, Mustafa, Lee, Leah and um, Faisal are here, myself and Eamon on your disposal if you have any uh, question there. Hafiz, why you are sitting? Come on. Come. Okay. Okay. So you have one question. Please go ahead. Thank you, doctor. This and and please, who are here, stay. We have a, a guru photo with all of you in the end. Siridhar, come on. Eviano. Yes, go ahead. So this question is for Dr. Faisal. Doctor, uh, do you feel that having a perinatal network at an emirate level and eventually a national level is achievable? If not, what can be done to aid democratization of perinatal and neonatal services in our existing system? Okay. So I think I, I got the first question, but I'll probably ask you to repeat the second one. Do you feel that having a perinatal work a network at an emirate level and eventually a national level is, is achievable? I, I am sure it's achievable. I think the important first to actually have the framework and the policies as a standard across UAE. So if you have a, a national you know, framework where the definition, because currently, as you know, we have uh, two main health authorities and we also have the emirate uh, healthcare service. So, and you can see, it's, uh, they may use the same definition for us, you know, def say, defining mortality and unit mortality, or perinatal mortality, but they may have a different type of exclusion or inclusion. So I think first thing, let's get the framework right. Let's get all the processes and policies and the standard together the same. So then you can have a network where they, everybody actually looking at the same thing, because the data is really important, and then you can, after that, you can have people actually come in, look at the process, they, everybody's doing the same. And 100% I, I, I is achievable. If you think about UAE, we only have 100,000 uh, life birth. So it's not, we have, you know, two, three million or something, yeah? So I am sure we can, if you're looking at the population currently, I think, is that 12 million or something? Sure. Yeah, so I'm just saying, yeah, we definitely, I think it's achievable. Uh, Faisal, uh, just one minute. In addition to that, we are having a very low neonatal mortality and this thing. So, is the government give you any target that we have to achieve that? We cannot be zero. Sure. I, I think we usually, as I said, working in hospitals, we think actually we can, especially if we work at level three or high, we said, oh my gosh, we had a lot of mortality. But we're talking about all birth, all uh, life birth. Yeah? So the mortality is actually overall, if you look at a neonatal unit, you may have a high mortality, but that's not reflecting neonatal mortality overall, which is really important because thankfully, you know, uh, nine out of 10 pregnancies are straightforward, babies go home with the mother with no issues. So I, th so I think, uh, yeah, it's something, yes, definitely. And I think, that I, I think the idea what it is, we need to look and have data, validated, standardized data, I mean, I know Leah was talking about the standard, you know, the quality of the data. The quality of the data is really important. So then you can put it into analysis, and everybody is getting the same data, the same process, and then you will have a better outcome. Yeah, Doa. Thank you. Uh, my question is for Dr. Faisal and Dr. Hafiz uh, regarding again the limits of viability. For example, a baby uh, who was born at 22 plus, but the weight is like. 510 grams, baby was born very weak and uh, was not offered resuscitation. Will this be considered as abortion or uh, 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 neonatal mortality? And whether resuscitation was offered and did not work, this will change the definition? Um, valid question. I think the Jora KPIs which are coming your way will say exactly that. So if a baby was offered resuscitation and then died, it will be counted as a neonatal death. 
And if not, I think it will be counted under still, but that's my understanding, Faisal, if you can correct. Yeah, I, I think, honestly, any live birth from 22 weeks and above, it is count and died, and the baby shows sign of life and dies. That is a live birth, and that's a neonatal death. Even if the weight is below uh, 500 grams? Yeah, I, I think that's really important. I mean, if it's, if it's 500, it doesn't matter what gestation it is, as simple as that. Okay. But after that, if you got a 22-weeker, uh, there's two things. You're talking about corrected uh, neonatal mortality. We know I'm talking about neonatal mortality overall. Yes. Yeah, it's really important. So if yes. a patient showed sign of life, so if the baby is born uh, at 22 plus 1, whatever, and it showed, say, you know, uh, 10, 10 heartbeat over a couple of minutes, you know, per minute, that's a live birth. Okay. So I think it's really important. The data is really important for overall to look at the whole service, look at what's happening in actually in, the, uh, in that sector. So I don't think it has to do, because currently Department of Health does not. I have not seen any data says the target should be 3.5 per thousand. It doesn't give you that. It's actually said lower is better. Yes. So that's really important. So I don't think we should think about limit of viability because limit of viability, and this is an IVF, you can have two weeks both ways. So I think what it is, you need to see the patient. You need to uh, first have the discussion with the family beforehand, see the patient, know all the information, make the assessment in the delivery, and you provide the patient who are actually responding to basic stabilization then and the parents, I, in this country, the parents don't have big say of not giving uh, resuscitation or stabilization. Yeah. So if the parents are keen for resuscitation for the 22 plus weeks, sorry, I mean, it, it went yeah. over to okay. limits of viability. Sure. Shall we start to offer uh, antenatal steroids starting from 22 weeks? Well, the data we discussed earlier, the babies who have been, the 22-weeker who's been treated as the same exactly, aggressively, like the 23-weeker, instead of one in 10 surviving, you will have three out of 10 will survive. Not as, not really different than a 23-weeker. Yeah, so if you're yeah, focusing on survival, focus care, yes, antenatal steroids is what people are heading towards. But it's still not on the local guidelines yet. Yeah, so uh, the, there is a uh, guidelines from Saha about uh, wh what to do with uh, borderline viable fetuses from maternal point of view and neonatal point of view. Well, we can send it to you and share it with you. It doesn't address that much the steroid issue because steroid issue is that debatable. But uh, it gives you step by step what you need to do for 22 weeks to 23, 23 to 24. Who, who's responsibility? Who's going to be notified? What's going to be the, you know, the resuscitation? So we'll be happy to share it with Regarding you. the so, steroid is uh, really so important. There is observational sure. study shows there is a benefit, observational studies. So, so my question, uh, before you come to, uh, uh, with this regard, uh, and I will come back to you, Iviano, uh, pointed to Siridhar and all of us, is a sensitive question, so don't take it personal. What do you think, the supportive care of very low birth weight, 22 week, or you are long enough in there, and half as Faisal, Iviano, uh, Amna, Eamon, anybody can, Mustafa can answer. Is we are ready for that? I mean, it's a learning curve this afternoon during lunch. We were discussing the same issue that when we were in UK in 2005 to 2010, for example, we were not touching the 23 weeker. We didn't feel we were ready for it. But in the past 10 years, both in UAE and in UK, 23 weekers has become almost like what we faced with 24 weeker before. And when I was training in India, I mean, again, the age issue comes up, but when I was training in India in 1990s, 28-weekers mm. was comfortable, but below 28-weekers, we weren't comfortable. So there is always a learning curve. There will be mistakes. I mean, for example, when we started managing our first 23, 24-weekers, we often faced low accident burns or, is, I mean, Dr. Helmut presented yeah. isopropyl alcohol <laughs> burns. So, the skin is totally different, the need for humidification, uh, the need for nutrition, 
how they tolerate feeds. I mean, we have the meconium inspiration syndrome. So their feed so, tolerance… So my different. question to you and Hafiz also, are we ready for that? We need to learn. I or mean, we, we no, learning, I know, that. learning is a always never-ending, knowledge is for sharing, this is my code. But are we ready for no, it? I'm answering a question <laughs> indirectly that we will not be ready straight away, but we are getting Hafiz, ready. what is your take? And then I come back to Eviano. At this point in time, the science is not entirely clear, let's put it that way. And it's… Uh, if you ask me personally, we are still finding our way through it. Yeah. yeah. Eviano. So, I have a different take on it because in the first instance, my first experience as a consultant in the UK was in a service where they aggressively managed 22 weekers. My question in my interview for that post was, why do you think we resuscitate 22 weekers? And my answer was, because you can. Because they could. They had been doing this for a while and they were confident about doing it. Now, there are other issues that we need to talk about, including the issue of steroids. So, even at that time, our team declined to give ladies steroids at 23 weeks. But the thing is that what half is present, that we want a survival only or we want an intact survival. Correct. That's the question. It is and, and it will and always I mean, be the question. Yeah. It will always be the question. And that like, question… Uh, sorry, I, I will say in 2017, we, me and Eamon invited that Japanese guy who is sending. is a 95 percent gra grade uh, one or two or three or four IVH. I mean, total is 95 percent of those 21 weaker has IVH. So, what's the point? So, I'll ask another question. Hmm. The next question is, how many people here are actively um, performing neuroprotective procedures protocolized for the extreme preterms. That's why I'm asking that, are we ready? Eamon, your take on it. Yeah. So, I, I think the, the issue is not like we have to resuscitate because we can, because we can resuscitate in 20 weeks. But uh, what's your outcome? Correct. So, the question is like how many survivals in 22 weeks in your institution? Like in our institution, there's a survival of 22 weeks. Um, and um, Mutik Mustafa has the picture, he's in contact with the parents. We have few survivors of 23 weeks, intact survivals also. So, uh, you need to know, I mean, I know it's learning curve, but you, you need to know what your institution is capable of doing, not because you, you can, but because of your outcome. Uh, the question is what for, for you? For that, we are we ready for... Yeah, we, yeah, no, no, we are, <laughs> we, we are ready to resuscitate 22 weeks because there are survivals. I and mean, we have survivals in our institution, so we are ready. But, uh, you know, uh, as for, for the mortality, I don't know, you took Torah to ask about what's our mortality. The Jodha KPI will tell you that corrected mortality should be less than 1.5 per 1,000 life birth. And uh, every country, they have their issue, their own mortal, infant mortality rate. U.S. have mortality rate in issue WHO, they have, you know, for everybody. So, uh, our goal for the Joda KPI is 1.5 per 1,000 life birth. The problem is that you don't follow the, the babies after you go, go out from your institution, so you are, you're underestimating the infant mortality because the baby might be going somewhere else and die there. But it's 1.5 per 1,000 life birth, which is very, very ambitious. I think compared to the… Uh, you don't agree? Okay. Uh, yeah, look, what's the infant mortality in the U.S. Eight to nine. Eight to nine. Eight to nine. So, sir, so Sarah, after this, all this discussion you heard, okay? So, do you think we will have a good neurodevelopment outcome? <laughs> My mind is gone, <laughs> but I am talking about <laughs> those babies. Well, you know, the other problem is that intact survival is. Um, is in the eye of the beholder. So many of the children who we are dis about whom we are saying they are not intact are children with whom their families are very, very happy. Um, and so, you know, there are plenty of children with borderline IQs who are walking, talking, functional members of our society with jobs. Maybe they're not the same as they would have been if they had been born full term, but there are they're people just like the rest of us and their families are happy with them. So, you, so I, we have to be careful about assuming that every child who's not classified as an intact survivor should not have survived. You know, the numbers of infants who, of children who are 
completely disabled to the point of being dependent on other people throughout their entire lives for their care is quite small. And so I think as we start to make decisions about whether or not to offer this therapy, we need to be thinking about survival and then severe disability differently from moderate disability, which, which really is a very different outcome. Okay. Yes, Sari there. So, I mean, coming to the UAE scenario, obviously, we have DRG system as well. And if you compare the money paid for a 22-weeker and a 24-weeker, it's exact same unless you go for surgery and mm -hmm. things like that. And mm -hmm. you're looking at a length of stay which is like double from three months to six months. That's and again, the outcome is difficult. So uh, unless the hospital is willing to hold that and your unit is going to block a bed for that long with an uncertain outcome. So if the parents are very keen, I think we are justified in offering because there are survivors. Sure. And again, in US, as Dr. Faisal said, there are studies which have looked at uh, steroids MagSelf, everything, and if you decide to go for full care, you can start with steroid and MagSelf yeah. right from 22 weeks. Can I disagree with you, though? Yeah. So, so I, I totally disagree with this statement because we cannot really, uh, you know, uh, design the medical care according to yeah. the microeconomics. Yeah. We cannot say that because you, you can it. afford to have <coughs> care, we have to give it to you. But if you don't afford care, we're not going to give it to you. This is like a, this is like kind of discrimination. Yeah. Just, Most of all, I want to comment. I, I want just to share the experience at the one hospital because we have many cases like this maybe in every week. We have to go to counsel families about 22 to 24 weekers and already you adopted the guideline. So in the guideline they would, uh, based on the sharing de decision between us and the family. So the answer for Dr. Janine, are we ready at the one? Yes, we are ready to give 22 weekers. But this is, will be a shared decision with the parents. Usually when we go to the parents, if we have 22 weeker, we'll come sad, we'll, we'll go there, and we'll give them the impression that the baby will not survive. When we'll come with 24 weekers, we'll be with big smile, okay? The, we have survivor right now, we are ready. I, I, I think this is not only the doctors I am talking about. It yes. is all over the thing, the nurses, the RTs, the yes. environment, the OBD and you know, and I, I know the yes. data is not very good. If this is think. what we did. We have a survival of 22, Faisal knows that, you have a survival, but can you combine it? Even the yes. job data, what about your data of 22 weekers? But I'm, I'm just, just to say, all the parents, or most of them, especially uh, the national one, they accept that we want to resuscitate. This is they say. And sometimes they will bounce to you. Okay, doctor, you are the doctor, you know better than us. This is, will be a huge responsibility for so us. So you know better we than said, them, no? You know there is a grade 3 IBA, you know there is a BPD, yes. you know there is yes, a neurodevelopment outcome. This is what we try to show them, and we already have data in our hospital, maybe we'll, share, we'll publish next month. We share them in all data, we told, told them everything, and then they said, okay, go for everything. Then what we can say, we say, okay, so we'll go for everything, but you have to know, sometimes we cannot stick the tube in, the tube, the baby will be so small. Sometimes during yeah. the physical exam will be baby below 22 sure. weeks, will not do, uh, and the change, change in the yeah, plan Faisal, will be at any time. Or your want, comment just, on just that, one, and one, then yeah. Leila. One comment, we're spending a long time talking about 22-weekers. The number of 22-weekers are become alive to attend neonatologists so minute, even of a total extreme premature babies. Majority will die before they arrive or die during, the, actually, in the sure. partum. So, so I think we just need to be pragmatic about this. Okay. Assess the baby, lucky assess a 23-weeker, offer the one who's actually responding to basic resuscitation, early resuscitation. Can, Can I just add something? Yes, yes Leah. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so all I was going to say is from the perspective, uh, Sarah and I both work at an institution where we do offer resuscitation to 22-weekers, and as you were just saying, and I completely agree, despite the fact that it's something that is a routine part of our practice now in offering to families if they desire it, we counsel in a very similar way because our outcomes are not promising. Um, yeah. And so yeah. the majority of those children will still die, and many of them will have long-term effects, despite the fact that it's something sure. that, that we now have integrated into sure. our practice. Yeah, Leila. So, so um, Jeanette, before answering your question, mm -hmm. I mean, how do we know if we did not give, if we gave steroid for 22-weeker, 
there might be better outcome. What I'm trying to say, I agree with Sarah and I agree with um, the other lady as well. Because did we do everything we can do for this baby? The, okay, we cannot do a lot uh, to prevent premature delivery. I mean, we're trying, but maybe in future things will become better. But when the baby is born, we are still far behind better tools to monitor, better tools to take the care of the baby from the beginning. We're still, still arguing about if positional, midline head is better or not better. There's a lot to learn for these babies to take care from the minute they are born until they reach terms. We are not even there. We are not even using the tools in the monitor, looking at the histogram, the trends, you know. We have not done all of that. And as, as the lady said, like, you know, um, maybe the family will be happier. There's a lot we need to apply when the baby is born to decide if this question can be answered or not. As, as so I think, I think Leila, this is your duty to counsel the pa parents and tell about that. And I'm not talking about counseling, I'm talking about our job. When a, a, a low birth, premature baby is born, there's a lot we are not doing from the beginning. We just no started now that. doing physiotherapy or positional therapy from the minute the baby is born. The minute he's stable, we start doing physiotherapy and we are seeing different. We are, uh, now we are uh, applying tools where we measure at least motor activity, you know, measure when the baby is, is born, you know, apply the, 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 the position and whatever, you know, exercise we do, and then later on. And if you just want to come and hear the parents. These parents were with their babies from the minute they born. I'm talking about 23 weeks, 24 weeks, 22 weeks sometimes, you know. They see the baby when they are in the unit and few months after, afterwards. Applying the right tools, not only for, for, for making things better, you know, moving the baby, you know, as soon as possible, it made a difference. We are not doing that. We're doing it in certain places, I think, until we reach that stage where we do more monitoring, understanding definition. We cannot even decide if PDA is significant or significant until now because we don't have the right tools. People are actually arguing with me why I'm doing ultrasound lung when I'm doing uh, echo. Because Real-time evaluation of the way can give you a lot of information. We're not there yet. This is already uh, Hafiz and Siri are saying we are on the learning curve. Of course, we have to learn and uh, this is no doubt about that. And uh, Faisal and uh, Leah is also telling the same thing. You have to evaluate the thing. Yes, Doha, anything? No, but just I want to ask you your opinion, Dr. Junaid, about the resuscitation <laughs> 22. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> That's good one. Okay, <laughs> because I ask everybody opinion. My opinion is the same. I, Twenty-two weeker. If they called me uh, two a.m. in the night, I will go. I will, you know, uh, assess the patient, and then I will tell the parents uh, how it is, looks like, if they want it or not. Because many times these babies, as Faisal said, during the process they die. Okay. And let's say if they survive with the, uh, what I don't want, the baby with the grade 4 IVH and the BPD and all those and the survive handicap. This is what I don't want. So I really take my time to evaluate the baby and tell the parents that what, we, what I should do. So, Dr. Al-Abid, Dr. Al-Abid. Yeah. So, so, I'm sorry that I'm confused now. So, what do you want us to do? You said we're not ready? So, okay, so now let me just tell you. If you're not ready, maybe we should get ready. I wish, yes. I'm, okay, good, good, good. So. <laughs> I am getting ready. I have, we have a physiotherapist in our unit. We, we need a proper nutritionist. We need early intervention from the first, first minute the baby in the unit. We need to teach our nurses how to position the baby. We need to apply neuroprotection in our no. units. There's a lot we need to do. Yeah. So this is what Dr. Iviano suggested, Yanni. If you have the neuroprotection bundle for an extremely low birth weight infant, this will improve your outcome. Sure. But can we wait until we get all this that Dr. Abed wants to do no. before we start resuscitating to it? Or just... No. Okay, very good. Okay. If Faisal we can't say something. Faisal. Just, just something to Dua really was interesting. So if you look at... Uh, the data from, uh, I think it's Edward Bell, uh, from looking at all babies below 28, from 22 to 28 weeks, was published 2022. 
And then out of that, there were around almost, uh, what was it, 550 babies, 150 or 160 were admitted to NICU. If they survived the first 12 hours, then their survival increases to 80%. So it's the first, really, the beginning, like you said, if the antenatally had a better support during intrapartum, and they also had a steroid, and they also had max sulfate and the antibiotic, and aggressively maybe had C-section if required. These babies, and managed well by neonatologists, the only problem with us, we don't know what to do with 22 weekers like we do with 23 weeker. We do too many things. And they are really different. So my point of view is sometimes hands off and not being aggressive looking for that blood pressure of 24, 23, and doing these things and leaving that baby alone. If they survive the first 12 hours, the survival goes up to 80%. Yeah, Hafiz. I uh, just wanted to add, we've been focusing so much on the hospital care of these babies. And we are comparing what's happening in the US, UK. What we don't have here is once they go out of hospital, the supportive services these babies need. For example, like the organized BPD program, which Sarah runs uh, in CHOP, the developmental surveillance which goes on, the occupational therapy, physiotherapy. I've seen even Emirati parents struggle, struggling to get the right services for the extreme preterms, leave alone the rest. So I think it's not just us neonatologists who make a difference to these outcomes. There's a whole lot of people out there who's need, needed to support these. That's families. I want to listen since morning. <laughs> this is not only the doctors who should decide. This is a lot of things, a lot of regulation. Mustafa, last comment because me and Ayman are very tired now. Good. So I think, I think the key point here is to keep all the team mentally prepared that this patient will survive or may survive, we'll say. We have few survival uh, last few years and we keep in touch with this patient and keep sending photo for us, sharing with the, all the team, RT nurses. This is, will encourage them to change the attitude toward this 22-weeker and for antenatal steroid whenever in our hospital Whenever we decide to go for photosustation, we offer neonatal, uh, antenatal steroid. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have to, uh...